hits everyone. Peter Sissons <laughs> went through every single name. Ricky got so paranoid they might mention him that we, we kind of legged it upstairs and were watching from the balconies. They shone the spotlight on our table. <laughs> it empty it was glass. Empty. That was particularly fun. <laughs> But uh, then at the end, Sir Cliff got up there, right, because Sir Cliff was giving out the um, the Lifetime Achievement Award, right, he gets up, he uses this speech, he goes, oh, this is a personal friend of mine, a seven days a week friend, a Lifetime Achievement Award goes to Mrs. Gloria Hunniford. Right, we immediately start thinking what exactly were her Lifetime Achievements. I think living that long. <laughs> that's pretty much it. I don't know what it is she's done, I Gloria Hunniford. I don't know what she does. I don't exactly, you know, I know she's done Radio 2 show, I don't think that's We're not dissing her, we're not dissing no, anyone. Good luck we're not her. taking the mick out of anyone, but, you but, know, uh, but anyway, it, was she, just a strange, it was just a strange event. But Gloria got taken unawares by this and started to ad-lib a speech. Right, and I swear to God, about 12 minutes in, she was telling us how, and I can repeat, I can tell you now if you're interested, her lovely daughter Karen is currently in Australia, is partly work, is partly a holiday, Carl, and she's having a whale of a time, but she's not spoken to her for ages. And then she went, she went, actually she's been there for a long time. Yeah, it's, and it's like, I was told she was going, she doesn't call, you yeah. do that, you get a blue Peter, and this is how she <laughs> <laughs> we thought she was going to get photos out, maybe, start showing it. It, no, was, it, was, very, it was a nice bizarre. event, and, uh, you know, everyone there, Henry Cooper was there. So Henry Cooper. <laughs> it was okay, because every was single element as well was sponsored by someone. Yeah. And I was looking at the menu, I've got the programme here, and the menu, like the pudding, is sponsored by Electrolux. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean, know if you're out of pudding sponsored by yeah. Electrolux. I was sponsored by Zanussi. When, uh, when everyone was doing the prayers, did you, did you look at them with their eyes shut? <laughs> <laughs> like you did at school? <laughs> what do you mean? Well, what, when you Did you look at someone with your eyes shut? No, like, you'd do that, you'd do your, um, your hands together. Yeah. Yep. And you sort of look at people with their eyes shut and think that's like what they look like when they're sleeping. <laughs> Play record. Can you ever do that? <laughs> <laughs> Table 60, Lisa Tarbuck. <laughs> a set corner shop, lessons learned from Rocky One to Rocky. I love that guitar. That's mm. great, it's real glam rock, it has T-Rex and Barry. I was not a play some up from uh, Ziggy Stardust today, but instead I brought in a different album, I'll have a bit of Barry. Is that mm. right? Oh, of course, yeah, always. Yeah, always. Beatles. Mm. Still to come up, by the way. Um, we, uh, uh, with the education of Carl, last week he did um, uh, Che Guevara. He did very, very well. well. Yeah. Before that, the week before that, you learned all about Russ Butin, didn't you? Mm. And this week you've been studying Hitler, haven't you? Mm -hmm. How does that go? Do you, how do you reckon that? It's a bit tough. Okay. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll give you a full story later, Steve. Do you know much about him? No. So, um, mm. they're all linked. All these stories I've been reading, they've all got a similar sort of thing going through. They're right. born, they have a bit of a tough upbringing. Mm -hmm. um, things aren't going well, and they seem to take it out on, on other people. Okay. Well, I'll tell you more later. Okay. Yeah, I don't think you can... I mean, I don't think Hitler and Che Guevara... It's the same thing. Of... Che Guevara, when he was a kid, yeah. had, like, asthma. Yeah. Right? He wasn't an happy kid. Uh, Hitler, um, he, uh... He only had one ball. Well, I was, I was trying right. to find about that. Yeah. Seriously, he phoned me up in the week. I said, how's it going? He went, I've skimmed it. I've just skimmed it. I was looking for the, uh, the testicle thing. Now, I don't know if they left that out or it's not true. Right. Which, so which he, was, he was he was trying to look up that Hitler has only got one ball. I think they only did it to wind him up. <laughs> because it's like, you know, yeah, you might be taking over the world, mm. but we're all saying you've only got one testicle. Sure. And it's so did you, look, did you look in the index and it's sort of Hitler, Adolf, <laughs> family life, early childhood, testicles. <laughs> testicles absence of. I sort of skim <laughs> through. Cause one of. Yeah. Yeah. Mother, mother, brackets, <laughs> other. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, Albert Hall. <laughs> yeah. The only thing I could find was at one point in, in like, when he was trying to run the place, uh, there was a meeting going on, and somebody had put a bag in, a, in the meeting room and it blew up. Yeah, yeah. And the table it was under the table. Yeah, but... It could have been if it blew a testicle. It was, it was, what, well, the testicle was under the table. No, the like, bag, the bag blew off the ball. No, the ball sack was probably hanging below the, uh, protective top, and so that's where he could have lost... But why would he have only just lost the one? Uh, because the... the way he was sitting. <laughs> Cross-legged or something. <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. Okay. Well, I mean, again, again, if, I mean, last week we had a Che Guevara expert from that. Maybe they could, uh, maybe there's a Hitler expert this time who could uh, maybe find out and confirm the, uh, the testicle, uh, yeah. uh, theory. Yeah. What's the number again, Carl? Oh, wait, 700, 800, 1, 2, 3, 4. You need to have at least I, I, a PhD I, I, or something. I don't think we should invite calls about Hitler. I think we're asking for trouble. No, I'm talking no. about someone who's done a study of him and he's done a PhD. Okay. I'm not talking oh, about I, any old nutter. Uh, and also, um, uh, Carl's lottery numbers. He's a little bit more confident this week. Okay, good. He, he, he went there more like it. And I looked at him and I laughed. He went, no, no, even Suzanne said I'm, I'm on, more on the right lines there. <laughs> is there is anyone who um, uh, has done a degree in maths or A-level maths that can bear... Carl won't believe this, right? Carl thinks 
I was trying to, I, I know I was uh, partly doing it to confuse him, just see that look on his face like a cat, right? But there is, the, the, the chances with a, a, a random numbers, for, the, for example the lottery, of getting one, two, three, four, five, six, are no greater than any other single combination. Right. Now that's true. I don't mean you're more likely to get one, two, three, four, five, six than any other combination put together, but than any other individual combination, they're all equal. It's counterintuitive, I know. I know you think that to get a run of one to six is less likely than anything else, but it's not. Uh, any name it to combine, it's not, Carl. If there's a, a problem with it's happened. It has ne it, it's never happened. Yeah, but there's any well, number of combinations that have never happened. happened. Every one of those combinations that have come up mm -hmm. have happened, and they're just as likely, or unlikely, as any other combination, right? Mm -hmm. It's just that you feel, intuitively, right, that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 are, is less likely than 1, 7, 12, 34, 60, you know what I mean? No, I didn't win. <laughs> Play record, okay. <laughs> Wu-Tang Clan, Boozy, Alexa Fan 104.9. Well, here we are, the day before St. Patrick's Day. Oh, hooray, brilliant. Guinness, etc. Oh, I hate people, I hate British English people, I should say, who are obsessed with celebrating St. Patrick's Day. You know, all crazy, it's like Chris Evans. Wow, it's like, it means nothing I to you. I think XFM just did that, to be well, honest. Well, yeah, exactly. Just as careful. Bad. Careful, they are employers. <laughs> you don't want to annoy them. What, what would we do without this? <laughs> well, that's true. Uh, yeah. Have an enjoyable Saturday. No, this is my favourite two hours. You like this, don't you? No, oh, I don't. We're not, we can't do this through May and June. No, we'll be gone. We've got to, be, we've got to record the second series of The Office. What are we going to do, Carl? What are you going to do on a Saturday? Host to show yourself? Do not me yeah. you, you are not. Are you seriously thinking of it? Have they asked you to do it? everything you... Why, why would you not think about it? Because I've, I've been there, I've done that. <laughs> 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 Next challenge, please! Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh dear. Do you know what do you know where what St. Patrick did? Why he was revered as a saint and everything? What was he famous for in Ireland? He did he rid Ireland of something. I don't know, but I bet he started off with something odd happening in his life. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think he had asthma or something as a kid? They <laughs> oh, all do. Uh, and he took it out on what though? What did he do? exactly he took it out on something? What did he do? What did he rid Ireland of? Uh, St. Patrick. St. Patrick. This is why we're going to get crazy and drunk tomorrow. This is why we're all so happy to celebrate his uh, anniversary or whatever it is we're celebrating. This is that's why, why we, we... That's why we have a crack. Yeah, this is why we don't bother to celebrate, you know, the birthdays of James Joyce, you know, one of the great novelists of this century, or Samuel Beckett, one of the great playwrights. We actually celebrate this man, St. Patrick, the man oh, who I did don't, what? Don't diss him. He did a good job of it as well, because there's none there now. There are none of these in Ireland. So... Mm. He rid Ireland of something. Come on, Carl. Think of something. Just give us an answer. What's he the went round on a horse whacking them and... He went on a horse whacking them? Yeah. What was it, Carl? What did he rid Ireland of? Went on a horse. Foxes. I don't well, know. No, you're no. on the right lines. On the right lines. Um... There's no animal. Oh! Bears. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> yes, it was bears. <laughs> wow! It was snakes. Right. And there are no snakes in He Ireland. rid Ireland of all the snakes. Yeah. Who did it here then? Because there isn't that many. <coughs> well, I think he, he had a, he had a stab at it over here as well, but got tired and went back. Yeah. That's why there's it's, just a few snakes here. Is, is, is it like, true that there are no snakes in Ireland? I think it is. I think if, if someone called it... And what is there, is there any historical evidence for St. Patrick ridding them of... I mean, how did he do it? Was it like the Pied Piper? See, I, I, I'm not convinced that... He did go round because it was snakes, but there are no snakes really? in Ireland, and that's yeah. I, I don't think he is now. If someone knows he is now, we were someone just uh, we had a few uh, uh, probability experts and statisticians and, and maths graduates confirming that indeed I was correct that the probability of one to six in a row is no more or less likely than any other single combination mm. in a totally random selection of balls, which brings us back to Hitler, doesn't it? Because he only had one, didn't he? Well, um, coming up, we'll be asking Carl all about Hitler, the education of Carl. He's done much beauty, he's done Che Guevara. Plus, of course, uh, White Van Carl, where we White ask Van Carl, Carl some of the, uh, you know, his opinions on some of the hot potatoes of the week. You learn as you go along, because you've got something about St. Patrick there, yeah. that was thrown in for free, that was an extra... I I'll learn you something, eh? Snakes. Well, I'll, sorry, I'll just stop you there and I'll teach you something, right? Oh, go on then. 
you don't learn someone something. You teach them something. Yeah. It's it's not it, 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 one's passive. You you, you, you learn, you? Ricky. I'm or, sorry, mate, but I don't think you should be teaching people how to speak or use grammar. <laughs> I just don't think it's appropriate. <laughs> it's, it's like it's embarrassing, <laughs> frankly, because there's so many errors you are making. It's like where to start with you? <laughs> snakes, right? You're talking about snakes. Yeah. For, a lot of snakes are born with two heads. It's like a. It's like a. <laughs> familiar type thing that's sn that happens to snakes okay. yeah they take it for granted don't they right snakes born two heads they'll fight each other for food even though it's going in the same body isn't that weird mm. were there kids at school that you went <laughs> 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 the, the snake that? twins yeah from mosley Oh, was, it, was, it, was, it, was there was kids at your school with two heads? Was that right? What? No, no, they had, they big, had big heads. heads. Oh, they had big heads and webbed hands, but they yeah. weren't related, and they they weren't friends because that would have been too obvious. Yeah. He said. Yeah. Oh, oh, Steve, listen. Before you came in, right? I sneezed a couple of times. So if I'm allergic, I've still got like, a bit of a cold. And I said, like, Oh God, he went. He went. Bloody hell! I was like, Sorry. And he went. And he went. You know, you can't sneeze with your eyes open. I went, Yeah. Yeah, and then he was obviously thinking to himself still, and after a pause he went, would your eyes really fly out? <laughs> uh, and I start laughing, he went, no, because that... Has anyone ever done that, do you think? <laughs> Has anyone ever held someone down, torturing them, and held their eyelids open and gave them pepper and see if their eyes would fly out? And he said, and then, and then he went, uh, I'm just looking at him again, the silence, and, he, and he, then he went, of his own accord, he just went, I can't see it happening. <laughs> You're some girl, Ricky. Oh, this, uh, yeah, uh, um, Bowie. Sorry, beautiful. Sorry, by uh, David Bowie. Uh, I've got that on a compilation today, but I, I think it's off originally off uh, the Pin Ups album, the one we did all the covers, because he didn't write that, did he? Uh, the, the, uh, someone with um, him and Twiggy on the front cover, isn't it? Right. I've had that for ages. I haven't got that. So uh, sorry, you lost me. I don't know what you're talking about? Are you reading the book there? No, I was just reading the um, the uh, brochure there, the uh, program, if you will, for the uh, Television and Radio Industries Club Awards that we went to. Incidentally, we we, we lost. Mm. We, we lost to Linda Green. Yeah, we didn't win an award. The best comedy. But you might be interested to know that Tom O'Connor is in constant demand for corporate functions both here and abroad, and his client list includes many multinational companies. No mean golfer, Tom took the literary world by surprise in 1992 and his first humorous golf book, From the Wood to the Tees, made the bestseller list. I know it didn't take the, the literary world by storm. No. <laughs> it took it by surprise. They're going, we can't say storm. <laughs> we can't. We've got to say by surprise from behind. But, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. but uh, his, his first humorous golf book, From the Wood to the Tees, made the bestseller list. I don't know if that's just books about golf, that bestseller list. Subsequent successful books include One Flew Over the Clubhouse. Brilliant. <laughs> Genius. Take a Funny Turn, Follow Me, I'm Right Behind You, and Eat Like a Horse, Drink Like a Fish. Does he but mention Celebrity s Squares? Didn't he do that? No. Uh, he did, um, the the name that tune. Crossword. Once, right? Um, I was. Uh, it's uh, crosswords. Do you remember crosswords? It, it was, was from the eighties. It was like a crossword game uh, show. It was yeah. often with um, Kate Copstick. But <laughs> I saw one, right? It was on the. It was on Challenge uh, TV. BMW. They know Andy Crane. Remember Andy Crane? Yeah. Jim, he was on the. He was the uh, link man, and he went coming up next. Uh, Tom O'Connor with uh, uh, crosswords with. Uh, well, in my opinion, one of the best crosswords players of all time, John Junkie. <laughs> 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 Oh, <laughs> who's your favourite Crosswits player? Yeah, yeah, it's got to be Junkin for me as well. But Copstick was Barry good, right? Cryer's bloody good. Though. Cryer was good. Cryer was good. I watched Call My Bluff um, uh, in the week. It was with Toxic and uh, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was quite good. I quite enjoyed I it. I you could get on there if you want. I used to watch it with um, what's his name? Frank Miller. Yeah, Frank Miller. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that was great. You were impression. brilliant impressions, because obviously I, while Barry was playing, you were doing your infamous Barry impression, which is the best one you do, actually. Well, that's just because Carl said, you know what, he said, I'd love to go out for a drink with David Barry. I've all people that come in here for sessions, I think he's really good in. And I said, I think he'd like you as well. That's all, and I just went, hello, Carl, you're strange, you're alien, it interests me. Myself and Ian, I'd like to put you on them. Yeah, I just imagine you and Barry in a pub somewhere. Isn't that pretty much the same impression you do when you do Ian Canfield? No. <laughs> Ian Canfield's more like that. <laughs> but not on air. On air he's sort of like this sort of eloquent 40 year old capital DJ. Yeah. And but uh, when you talk to him in the studio... In, he's, he's, slowly like turning, he's, st he's slowly turning into uh, Tommy Vance, isn't he? Mm. This is one of his pillars of rock, Canfield. He loves Vance, <coughs> Lemmy, uh, Diano. If we uh, if we run out of material later in the show, which is 
be unlikely. Yeah. Uh, considering we're, we're now talking about... Yeah, we ran out of it five, five past one. Exactly. But could, we, could I maybe just sort of interview you as David Bowie? Yeah, that would... A sort of humorous sketch? Yeah, that would be fantastic. Maybe it could be the idea that what if, like, David Bowie was, you know, a cab driver? What well, would he say? What was his well, sort of funny the, things he would we say? We saw that, um, that, what was that in when it said, uh, um, Dead Ringers coming up? If you've ever wondered what, uh, yeah, it would sound like... Dead, Dead Ringers is this impressionist show, they did a, it's on Radio 4 and they did a TV version. Yeah, I saw it. What did you make of it? I didn't like it. It was alright, no, it was just that the write-up in, uh, the Radio Times, in the Radio Times said, uh, ever wondered what it would be like if, uh, Robbie Williams was singing George Formby, or what would it be like if, uh, there was a I think animal it was, hospital was, was hosted was by, uh, Anne Robinson? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, do you know, I have. I have wondered. Was it, were those two sketches on there last night? Yeah. Yeah. What were yeah. they like? You are, you are the... We you are the weakest dog Stink. No, what was it? It was something like... The, the, the they had to vote off an animal to die or something. It wasn't like that, yeah. It was this is flagging. Quick, do your bowie again. Um, oh, come in here. Look, it's Tim Machine. Now let's play Changes. Hello. Iggy Pop, you nutter! Stop cutting yourself! <laughs> Travis, flowers in the window on XFM 104.9, 2 o'clock, halfway through. Oh, it's our favourite time, isn't it? My yeah. favourite time of the week where we come in here and uh, play some records, have a chat. Ricky, a lot of people are wondering who you are. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant. Hi. There's little Carl over there. Mm -hmm. Steve, it's time for... White Van Carl. Uh, we should definitely get some jingles. I think it, it, the show sort of lacks jingles, I think. Yeah. The noises. Yeah. Funny sound effects. Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> <a bit annoying>. <laughs> <laughs> what's on. Mr. Nosy Neighbour interested in? Hello, what's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we should definitely get some pre-recorded comedy noises coming yeah. up next Yeah, week. that's my job, but unfortunately I'm busy reading about Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> Now I'm not familiar with this feature. Basically, uh, the Sun runs a white van man column where um, it asks uh, just people who, you know, every kind of every every men and women their views on uh, news stories from the week. And uh, we decided we'd just ask Carl his opinion on some of the same issues. This week, not like us um, to rip off another idea and just use no, it for no, our no, own. No, 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 no. But this time, the yeah. white van man in the Sun this week is Herbie Crossman from Harrow, Middlesex. Um, Herbie, and he's been as he's asked to, asked his opinion. Carl, and what's yours on pop idol Will Young admitting he is gay? Um, it's. I don't understand what the big deal is, to be honest. Okay. No. Talking to different people about it, and they've said, oh, it could affect the sales, you know, girls won't like him anymore, which I think is is rubbish. Yeah, because it finished George Michael's career, didn't it? Well, yeah, and I was thinking when I was growing up, right? And, and Freddie Mercury. I was into uh, Kim Wilde, right? Sure. Now. And her kids. You're not going to she's gay, are you? No, but if she was, if they said, oh, she's, she's you know. A, a leather, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say right. That's it. I'm taking kids in America back to the shop. I'm disgusted. Sure. I liked her. Yeah. I, I don't think I'm ever going to like meet her and, and marry her and that. So what does it matter? Yeah. Will Young. She's a good voice. He's gay. You know. A lot of gay people in the world. Georgie boy was gay. I guess. There you go. Nothing more and nothing less. The kindest guy I ever knew. So Do your Bowie. <laughs> <laughs> no big deal. That's one of your favourite songs, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Killing of Georgie parts one and two, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, um, what do you make of the police protesting to Parliament over reforms? That's not the band. Before you say. Right, what, what's all that about? <laughs> okay, well, the police have uh, had various kind of gripes and grumbles which they've taken to Parliament, trying to get them sorted. Like what? Well, it could take ages, basically. They, they don't like the it's pointy crazy. helmets anymore. Yeah. They want flat caps. They feel that their um, they, you know, they, their powers are restricted. They get a lot of bad press. They're not being paid. Well, they're they're only they're, they, they actually um, demonstrated, didn't they? Outside. I think they've done yet. Yeah. Yeah. Well, at least they're doing something about it instead of just sitting there moaning. <laughs> you know what I mean, okay. they're going to the top, trying to sort it out. Yeah, I admire that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. What yeah. do you mean, of the police generally? Are they doing a good job? Um, they've woke me up a couple of times at about four in the morning when I was a kid. Right, well, was that because they were looking at That's they were looking I... for your brother in his tank? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, did a Sherman tank just come through here? Yeah. No, my mates nicked cars and gave my name and all that. Right. <laughs> were they friends of yours? Mm-hmm. Right, yeah. yeah. Okay, um what do you make of boyfriend? There's worries that she may be cracking up, Carl. <sighs> Are you what, concerned? What are the signs? Uh, well, uh, I'm not entirely sure. I'm just reading from this section, but I would assume that she's obviously showed signs of depression, maybe. She'll be alright. I remember, like, you know, 
Z- Zoe Harris, when she sort of got bored of me when I was a kid. Yeah. Get over it, don't even think about it, I know. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, and how long did it take you, how long did it take you to get over Zoe Harris? How long did it take you to get over To be honest, right, it was like one of my first girlfriends and she was a pain. I remember, I went out with her, <laughs> I 